Okay. Hello. Good morning. I'm having I had some bad luck this morning. I tried to um, take the video uh, and no audio uh, came out on the result. So we're trying again. Uh, of course, this is the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. The first reading is Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 2 to 6. Moses gives the Hebrew law or Torah to the Hebrews with its hundreds of commands and prohibitions. From my personal point of view, this regime of training and discipline, the Torah, is like what a loving parent gives to their little children. In the New Testament, this same loving God expects that his sons and daughters will have developed to the point where God will only uh, will then only have to give far fewer commands that are far broader in scope in what they demand of us. The best example of this is in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, where Jesus simply says, So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. In the Old Testament law, God promises that observance will lead to a long life and to a land flowing with milk and honey as a reward. I believe that observance of the law in the proper spirit was given to the Hebrew people as a sure way to help them to grow, in that all-consuming love of the Lord that is demanded by the first of the two great commandments. Going then to the third reading, chapter, uh, rather Mark chapter 12, Verse 28b to 34. We always hear and read the command, You shall love the Lord our God. Unfortunately, it can easily give the impression that love begins with us. In the first letter of John, uh, chapter 4, verse 19, clearly states, We love because he first loved us. Then we can go on to, again, uh, first letter of John, chapter 4, but now verses 9 to 10, which says, In this way the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he has loved us and sent his Son as expiation for our sins. As we daily grow in the love that God has for us, we become more capable in turn of loving God with all our heart, with all our mind, and with all our strength. We cannot give what we do not have. The only way to have a genuine life of love is to get it as a gift from God himself. God is the ultimate source or root of all goodness. Jesus says in John, chapter 15, verse 5, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Secondly, we cannot love what we do not properly respect. To respect God, and often in the scriptures it was called to fear God, the same as to respect God, means to hold God in our hearts and minds for the person God truly is, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-present, all-loving. However, we cannot truly and fully grasp who God is because he is infinite and we are finite. Because he is the Lord our God and we are not God, we must live in total submission to his will as a way of respecting him for who he is. God is love. His will is love. To live in anything else but a total submission to the will of God is not to live in his love. In John chapter 14, verse 21, Jesus says, Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and we will love him, and I uh, reveal myself to him. 
I will love him and I will reveal myself to him. In John chapter 14, verse 23, Jesus answered and said to him, Whoever loves me will keep my word. My father will love him and we will come to him and make our dwelling with him. If God does not give us the love with which to love, we can have no true love for God. To truly love God, our neighbor, means that God himself must live within us as the source of our love and life. In the second reading, Hebrews chapter 7, verse 23 to 28, Jesus, uh, this is a quote from that um, from that second reading. Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he is always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever to make intercession for them. Jesus, who has been made perfect forever, is the perfect priest to appeal to God for us. In John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus, who loved us so much that he died on the cross for us, is the sure way to heaven for us. He is the sure way for us to live with our becoming love as he is love. God be praised.